Hey guys, it's Witty, and I hope that you're having a great day. I just wanted to take a chance to say thank you so much for all the positive interaction on my demonship video. Uh, it's been really fun to watch the launch progress and gets all sorts of great feedback. So thank you guys so much. A comment that I got a lot was asking if I would do a demonship playthrough. And I figured that the best way to do that would be to reach out to Malev and see if he was willing to hop on a Discord call and run me through a game. And luckily for me, he was. So I would like to share that with you today. I wanted to thank you guys so much for all the great feedback. It's super helpful for me as I'm learning and growing on this YouTube adventure. If there's any other games that you'd like to see me try out, if you'd like to see me play, anything like that, I read every one of your comments and it's really nice. So thank you guys so much. What's up? What are we doing here? So I'm going to have you run me through Demonship because a lot of people have been asking to see a playthrough and I thought what better way than the creator himself making it happen. Show me I've how to do it. Those, I've been reading those same comments. We haven't played Demonship together since uh, since Adepticon. Since that you ran true. me through the alpha rules and kicked my ass. Yeah, I think that you died. Well, that was pretty common for people to die really fast in the alpha rules because the alpha rules were kind of kind of not good. <laughs> but now a lot of people have been watching the video introducing Demonship, and they have been very curious to see a playthrough. So I figured, that what's true. The, what's the best playthrough I could do with the creator himself? Why not? So I've given you the new rules. Big yeah. love to everybody who has contributed playtesting and proofreading and suggestions because a lot of things have changed. Demonship used to be really bad. So now <laughs> we're going to figure out even more because we still have a little bit of time to do a little bit of playtesting during the pre-order uh, kind of window and make some very minute. Most of the changes will probably be like grammar and stuff, making sure that it's it reads correctly in that side of thing. But there's still a little bit of time to make some changes here and there. And today, I'm going to try and give as best of a demonstration, and we'll see what it what happens. Like I said, witty has got the rules on her side, and I believe you've got the room layouts ready. Yes, we're starting the game. We have unpacked, we have taken all of our terrain out of our demon ship box. We have our dice, mm -hmm. our six-sided die. Dice. <laughs> got monsters, which were... Um, the very early versions. We got our survivor. Look, yeah, look at that. That's, uh, the resemblance is uncanny. Woody, we're going to pretend like you know nothing about Demon Ship, despite Demon having what? Ghost Boat. Ghost Boat! Oh, Shout out to John. So, in Demon Ship, you play a nameless survivor, unless you choose to give him a name, who sort of wakes up in the middle of a cataclysmic event that is happening on board don't really know what's going on you just know that the ship is without power and you've got to get out terrible noises screams it's very dangerous but because you are an awesome person just by default you are ready for all that action to take on whatever is inside the ship and so it is a solo game where we will be using this cool terrain designed by black sites studios which represents the entire play space of the game uh which is all done in a six by six play area and the way that it sort of works is you've got three stages you wake up in the power stage with the ship being without power you've got to navigate to the engine room and restore power to the ship using a basic set of simple action resolution to move and shoot and interact with objects and make your way throughout the rooms and you do that by simply setting up the play area each room that you find yourself in and when you complete the objective or if you get slain or if you exit the room and you clear the whole board off and then roll another dice and see which room that you found yourself in right now there are six total rooms but there are two layouts i'll have you Roll a dice, Witty, to see which layouts we're going to use. Low will be A and high will be B. Two. Two. So we'll use the A layout. So as you mentioned in the introductory video, a lot of what we want to roll in Demon Ship is on a four or higher. And in this case, because the game starts in the power stage where the power is out, 
in order to progress into the second stage, which is called the emergency stage, you'll have to find your way to the navigation bay and turn on the emergency evacuation protocols and then game will progress into the last stage where you'll simply try to find the escape pod bay and just get out. Yeah, and then uh, the ship so blows up. Roll another dice, Witty, and we'll see which room you start in. Where am I waking up? <clears throat> One. One. Ooh. Okay, so you start out in the corridor. Dang so it. if you look at your page 30, we're using A layouts. Mm -hmm. So you will take the first thing that we're that you do because the game plays in two phases. The first phase is the room phase where you set up the room, and the second phase is the wits phase. And when you're setting up the room in the room phase, the first thing that you'll probably want to do is start with the room walls, the bigger sections that match kind of the orange blocks on the map key, and then we will go to the second step. Yeah, yo, this layout is freaking crazy. This <laughs> is the one with the that magnet. Magnets? The mag how do they work? How do they work? We don't know. Bada boom. Got our walls. And the next thing, it says elements, discover lock crates, and discover barrels. Mm -hmm. So in Demon Ship, when you enter rooms, there's a rule called discover. You roll a dice, and depending on what you roll when you're trying to discover that particular thing, in this case, uh, discover locked crates, on a one to two, you don't find any. What did you roll? Because it sounded like it I rolled off the it. table. I got too excited thinking about crates. One. You didn't find any crates. <gasps> no crates. Um, but you might find barrels, Ooh. so roll another dice and see... What you got? Five. You found two barrels. Because, Whoa. yes, on a roll of a one to two, you find nothing. On a roll of a three to four, you find one of the items. You dis you discover one of the items. And then on a roll of a five to six, you discover two of the items. Boop. All right. So now we've placed our room elements. The next thing that we got to do is if you look on the map key, there's two spaces that are marked E1 and E2. E1 is the entry and E2 is the exit. Roll a dice. And on a low, you will get one. On a, a one. Put your in the f All right. So put your he character wants. in E one. Am I putting my door on there? Yes. Also, between the two walls, the shaded square is the platform. Okay. So perfect. We got our room set up right now. Here's our room. And that is the room set up. The last step of the room phase is spawn demons. Oh boy. So. You guys can see this graphic right now. It's most like a simple. Most of Demon Ship is really just designed to. You're going to be rolling a lot of dice to figure out, you know, because you're kind of generating a lot of elements. In this case, roll another D6 and we'll see what demons we get. I haven't been rolling very high, so we'll see. <laughs> I have been seeing that. They don't want to roll low, kind of, with the demons. Oh, five. Okay. So on a four to five is kind of like the the basic result two blade demons so in this case your two imps with the claw hands will be our blade demons and in this game the way that you spawn the demons is defined by what's called a spawn style and there's three of them ambush prowl and attack in this case the spawn style that these blade demons are going to use is prowl which is spawn within four spaces out of line of sight if possible one, two, three, four. Yeah, so you can count um, orthogonally or diagonally, if you wish. All right, Lady, we have completed the room phase. You've set up the room. And then the last thing we did was spawn the demons. And now we have our play area set up and ready for the first wits phase, first kind of round of gameplay in demonship. But what is important to know in the first stage of the game, the power stage, power is out. So, it's, there is a effect applied to the game called Darkness, which is pretty straightforward. It just means that you can't see beyond two squares in front of you right now. Everything, the power is out, it's only emergency lights, so if you were to use your imagination, there's harsh contrasts of reds, red spill lights kind of going everywhere, making everything kind of difficult to see. So, until we find the engine room and interact with the console to complete stage one of the game, the darkness effect will be 
applied. And why that's important is because in order to shoot something, you do have to see it in Demon Ship. All right, so we're gonna go into the width phase. And an important thing about Demon Ship is that there is a mechanic called your pulse rate. And it kind of does a lot of things. It tracks your health of the survivor, but it also sort of abstracts the condition, the frantic condition of the survivor. And it also sort of indicates the kind of chaos that is unfolding around the survivor. So pulse rate is a lot of things, but what's important is that it is going to track your health and it's going to be what gives us actions to actually play the game with. So in this case, you all survivors start with three pulse. And why that's important is that at the beginning of each wits phase, we're going to have to roll our pulse dice. So you'll take three dice and roll them. Six, Ooh, I like four, it. four, and a five. Wonderful. So... In Demonship, after you roll your pulse dice, pretty much you're going to immediately reference them. Results of 1, 2, and 3 are going to become actions for the demons to perform. And results of 4, 5, and 6 will become actions for you to perform. So nice. in this case, because you rolled a 4, 5, and 6, you are granted 3 actions to choose from. From 6, you spend one of those dice to perform the action that is listed. And on page 18 of the rule book, y'all can see this little chart here called Survivor Actions. And Witty will be able to now choose from her three successful pulse dice. Of those, because you have three, you'll be able to choose three of these available six. What you want to do? So I can't see anything yet. So I can hear, you know, there's a lot going on and I can hear some scary noises, but I do not know it's making them. I yeah. think I will be moving because I'm in here and I would like to be out of here. So I will move. And cool. so how many spaces can I move per dice? So each action, the exception of one, has a naming convention which indicates two sort of instances. And an example, the first action is called blast or bash. If you're next to them, you're going to bash them, and if you're not next to them, you're going to blast them, right? And so in this case, where where it is important is if you're going to do a move action, you have to decide whether you're going to do a move or a blitz. Now, they're the same thing, but blitz you have to do if you want to move through spaces that are occupied by demons. So in this case, because you're not going to do that, you could just do the third action, which is move. And you can see in the second column, it has the effect of the action, and that is move up to three spaces beautiful and you can move diagonally or orthogonally two three so that's my first dice all righty and now like i was saying because of the effect darkness and you can only see two spaces you would technically be able to see both of those that is a rude right surprise now. It's scary. They're Very right there. Very nasty surprise. Because your objective in the first stage of the game is to find the engine room, you don't necessarily have a great deal of incentive to do a lot of attacks. Now, the reason why is because if we bring up the survivor actions again, each action that you perform in the wits phase converts into what is called a mirror action, where surviving demons are going to mirror every action that you did so in this case if you did attacks surviving demons would attack uh, if you did moves demons are going to move and if you do evades or defensive things demons are going to evade and become defensive themselves that being said your real kind of objective in this particular room is just to get out knowing that i would so my next dice would be one on the space one, two. And then, I'm to um, the door. Yep. So you're to the door with your second move. And now in order to leave the room, you have to perform the interact action. So that now would be the interact last. action is just the last dice. And in this case, because there's no demons next to you, you just punch in the code and the door opens. But Whew. say that there was demons next to you, You'd have to perform a test, and then you'd have to roll a dice, and on a 4+, plus, then you'd succeed. But in this case, because you were very speedy, you just ran past them. And this was a lucky start. The door. 
Let's like start. So now what we're gonna do is we will clear off the board because since you left the room, the demons that are in the room are that we can assume they did stuff, but they have no object permanent. So they did stuff. They, ooh, whew, that's why you got <laughs> out of there. I was like, I I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Listen, if I have two minis in my hand, I'm going to make them kiss. Yeah, in Relic Blade, there's a rule called engagement range, and it's half an inch, and that's when they kiss. Alrighty. So now, we have played through room phase. We set it up, and we played through just one wits phase, because you rolled three actions. You got four, five, six, which is good. It allows your character to act with the most agency and really allow you to do the things that you want to do. So you're able to just run out and uh, avoid avoid the kissing uh, make-out demons. So now we got to repeat the process. we got to go into a new room phase, and you have to roll to see which room you end up in. And again, we're using A layout. Three. Three. So in this case, you have found the cryo room. Whoa. So there is... One thing worth mentioning now is that the room that you want to find is on the result of four. You rolled a three. There is a mechanic called exertion, and since at this point in the game flow, you are doing what's called a room test. You're seeing, you're testing to see which room you found. And so the exertion rule allows you to, at this point, take a point of damage to exert and add a modifier to your die roll. In this case, raise it from a three to a four. Should you want to take a point of damage to do that, or by that mean raise your pulse rate in order to find it, or you could just roll with the three, and we'll set up the cryo room. Hmm. I think I'm I'm feeling cocky. I I could take a point of damage. I'm doing good so far. I think uh, I want I want the room that I'm trying to get to. That's what I want. Okay. So yeah. we'll do some exertion. All right. So we'll ra raise your pulse rate, but you will have found the engine room. And what that means is that um, that is result four. Set up four A. So I'll have four pulse dice now? You will have four pulse dice now, yeah. I can count. You can count. And I was just thinking, well, how fun, because you don't really have to track anything. You just look at the dice that you have. I use little nice. tokens to, like, mark wounds and stuff. but And the token sheet that's coming with the game is going to have evasion tokens and wound tokens. And it's nice. also going to be able to, repl like, if you just play, say if you just, like, have a sheet of paper and you have the token sheet, there's, like, the doors and the crates and the barrels so that you can just have those as tokens and nice. still, like, play with them. So the, the token sheet's pretty cool. This is the one with the wonky magnet. Oh. So now the second part is, so in the description of this one, it says elements right one console mm -hmm. one lock crate there's our console we got our crate right there console got a crate now we've got to see which entry you come in do you come in okay. to door number one or door number two gotta roll the dice and see which space your survivor goes in four that's a foa that's the top right corner yeah there you go put down the other door for the exit goes pretty much at the opposite little corner bada boom and then the last thing you gotta do is roll a single dice to spawn demons now it's time to spawn some demons i'm scared three 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 is going to be three demons in this case one of them is going to be a gun demon so you need your guy with his gun arm and then two blade demons. So the blade demons are going to be prowling again. So out of line of sight within four spaces. And the gun demon is actually going to just be right in front of the crate. Looking straight at you with attack spawn. Which means in the furthest space in line of sight. So he'll just be right there looking at you. Getting ready to level his, his shooty blast arm. And then the other two are within four out of line of sight. One, One two, two, buckle my shoe. Four? Oh, wait, actually. Three, four, demon at the door. One, two, You can also three, count um, the four. spaces where walls are taking up as well. Gotcha. Or go diagonal. It'd just be side by side. Oh, they're holding hands from earlier. Oh. 
It's the same ones, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm adding narrative that this is these are the same demons from earlier. And they're That's holding it, we're, hands. We're, we're, we're demon shipping. We're demon shipping, and this is uh-huh. their second date. <gasps> <laughs> this is the second day. This is Hopefully they don't get blasted. Um, alrighty. So now we are ready to go into the wits phase, and because you took a point of, you took a, you increase your repulse rate by one to um, exert. So you increase your pulse rate by exerting, and you have found the engine room. And now because your pulse rate is increased, you're gonna roll an additional pulse die in the beginning of the wits phase. So. Let's roll them dice and let's see what happens. Oh. Okay. Oh. One, so, one, two, and three. Yes. So unlike last wits phase, where you rolled pretty well, and you got three actions. Now, for each result of one, two, or three, the demons are going to perform actions oh, before no. you, and uh, actually you won't be performing actions at all. So in this case, the all of these actions that you roll in the witch phase are called pulse actions. And there's pretty much two action types that demons do. Pulse actions and mirror actions. And they're distinguished just because the pulse actions are they're they dynamically convert, is what I call it in the rules, where mirror actions are literally just reflections. And they don't they won't be as adjusting the way that they operate. So in this case you have a pool of demon pulse actions. Each result of a one is an attack. Each result of two is a move. And each result of three is an evade. So in this case, you're going to result, you resolve the demon pulse actions in descending order. So we're going to resolve that three first. And the demon that is closest to you will gain an evasion token. Okay. So. A demon gets an evasion token. I don't currently have any evasion tokens with me right now, so I'm going to use this. Perfect. He's got an X, X. from a game called Warcry. Cool. So he's got a little... And you could put that right next to him on top of the little wall right there. This guy. Boink. Yep, because he's the one that gets it. He's All evading. right, so we've resolved the three now. Now we have to resolve the two. And in this case... That same demon is going to do the two action as well. And that demon moves has a move value of three. And they can also move diagonally around corners. So with only two moves, uh, that demon can reach you. Let him go. One. No, they're then. We heard yeah. he went over this. We think they're, they're a couple. <laughs> All right. So now... Oh. Criti- critically slain so the two has been resolved and now that demon is moved next to you and each result of a one is an attack oh no um so now you could just grab both of those dice and that demon will try to deal damage to you and when the demons deal damage to you you have a chance to dodge and so you roll these dice you can dodge it on a four plus let's see what you got Two sixes! Oh my gosh. A one! (laughs) All right, great. So, when you dodge and you hit those sixes, you you get to bank them to potentially get yourself a real cool edge here because of all of this demonic, hellish energy that is suffused in the environment. All of these violent actions and reactions are fueling your survivor with all types of crazy arcane energy. And if you manage to dodge attacks, so pretty much if you expose yourself to danger and you also manage to survive said danger um, by rolling sixes when you dodge, when you have three, you'll be able to spend them, unleash the number of the beast. And so after all actions would be resolved, in this case, would be the window. Say if you did have three, because you resolved the three, you resolved the two, and both of those ones. After all of the actions have been resolved, you would be able to spend your three sixes to perform any actions that you want from the original six. Um, And those wouldn't be mirrored. You just kind of get bonus actions to do that. 
Nice. Uh, so now you've got two. So in some way, if you can mark it, you've got two sixes, or put those dice off to the side. But you've done. You, that's it. The the wits phase is over. Your survivor didn't get any actions in that wits phase because you didn't roll any. I rolled and real bad. Because you didn't perform any. The demons are not going to mirror any actions as well. They just got pulse actions and just got to jump on you. But you didn't take any damage either. So at the beginning of the wits phase again, you just roll those four pulse of dice. Another six. Look at okay, that's good. So six, four, four, and three. Six, four, four, and three. Okay, so the demons are going to perform actions before you with their pulse dice. So that three is going to go to an evasion of the next closest demon. Since that demon right in front of you already has an evasion token, mm -hmm. it's going to go to the next closest. And what evasion does is if you ever try to deal damage to them, one point of damage will simply be evaded and the token will be removed. Gotcha. All right, so the next demon evades, and then you have three actions to perform and do what you will. You can shoot. You can blast. You can run. You oh. can gun. You can style on them. Well, I'm trying to get to this door, so I'm going to have to do Well, you're something. So now, since we're in the correct room, the engine room, what oh, you want to do is to get console. to that console. Yeah. And Ooh. if you interact with the console, you will complete stage one of the game and restore power to the ship. All right. So I got I to gotta blast this fool in front of me. You could blast him. But like I said, if because he's got an evasion token, one point of damage will simply be evaded depending on which action you choose. So I feel like if I run and try to go around, hmm, I could try to run and go around, but I don't know if I'll make it. I've still now got you can also use the blitz action to move through, but that puts you at a little bit of risk where if you, you have to roll a dice for each space that you move through. So in this case, you'd have to roll one dice. And if you roll a one, You'll take a you'll pulse your pulse rate will increase again, um, and you'll become closer to death. But if you roll a six, you do dodge. Hey, try to so, shoot him up. I got okay. that. I got that nice gun. He's right there. So which action? There's two actions that deal damage that you can choose from. So I could blaster bash, or I could spray him, or cleave kick. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm gonna try to. There's also um, number four as well. Oh, run and gun. Mm -hmm. But the but the only thing about run and gun is and deal one damage, but he can, he's got that evade token. He's gonna evade it. Yep, but it, run and gun is a great way to remove evasions. But it's, yeah, it'd still be running. I'm gonna try to run and gun. Okay. In which direction are you gonna go? So it's important to note that if you run and gun, you can't move through him. You'll have to move down the hallway to your left. Ooh. Okay. Well, yeah, then because you can only move through them if you want to do the blitz, like you're gonna barge through them and you know kind of bash them out the way, mm. or dodge, dodge nimbly as you run, slide through their legs or something. I think then. Ooh, I'm in a bad position. I think that I will. I'll. I think I'm just gonna blast him. Perfect. I'm so, gonna blast him. Anyway, I started blasting. Bam. Wow. Bam. You'll deal two damage, but because he has an evasion, he'll only be dealt one damage. Mm -hmm. And each one of the blade demons, those guys in front of you, have two health. So he will have one hit point remaining. Pow pow. Cool. So yeah, you can remove the evasion token because he dodges one. I but then he up. gets dealt dealt one point of damage. So that guy has one point of damage. All right. Two more actions. So now that he has that off, think if I run and gun I have to run down this way maybe I should just try to kill him if he's one left I'm gonna try to kill him I'm gonna blast Which him again. You go. all right so because you just deal two damage to him you only have one health he just gets exploded in front of you and he's you remove him <laughs> so you've and done the other two demon, blast actions the other demon's like no no Oh, the demon's not going to like that. Uh -oh. All right, and you have one more action now. What's that one going to be? So, move up to 
three spaces if I blitz. I need that console. Need the console. How far can I be away from a demon to blast them? So, normally, when the power is restored, you could see as far as the entire board. Nice. But because it's dark right now, you can only see two spaces in front of you. So they have to be within two spaces. So right now, that, that shooty demon is at four. So if I have to get to the console, that's where I'd, I'd be like, okay, I saw this demon right in front of me. Blast him out of the way. I would mm -hmm. be running in the dark towards that console, knowing that's where I gotta go. So I'd go... I have four movement? Three. Three. But you can move diagonally right there around One, that corner. Two... And then, ooh. He can only melee you if you're directly next to him. Not not diagonally. So oh, in this case... Perfect. This is good. Yes. You have a good position for the melee guy. But shooty gun guy can still shooty gun guy ya. And so now, you've done all three of your actions, right? Yep, I've moved, yep, and then, yeah, so I'm going to put myself right And you right did, here. What, what was the actions that you did? I, oh, did I do three? Because I blasted, yeah, did, I, I blasted yeah. and I moved. You blasted twice. Oh, yeah. Blasted. Yeah, you blasted twice and then move. And so okay. why that's important is because now we have to do the mirror actions. And the mirror actions, if you look at the chart you do them in the same order so you did two blasts so now the demons are going to do two demon attacks Ooh. and then because then you moved then one demon is going to then move after so in this instance the blade demon can't attack you because he's melee um, and he needs to be directly adjacent to you but the gun demon can is looking straight at you and has line of sight to you with their ranged attack so you're gonna have to take two dice and just as if just like when you got attacked last time you have a chance to dodge you're gonna roll those two dice and on a four higher you take no damage please be a six and if you get one six oh, oh. that's snake oh, that eyes two ones? that's two Ooh. ones that's two ones. Ooh. Oh, no. All right. So you have taken two more points of damage. Your pulse rate has been increased to six now, which is the max pulse rate that you can be. Seven, you die. And yeah, seven, you go kaput. You have to resolve the last move. In this case, the demon that is next to you will simply shift one space to be adjacent to you. Bloomp. All right. And now it's a new wits phase. Uh, I believe the third wits phase of the game, technically, technically in the second room phase, uh, you're still in stage one, the power stage, and you got to get to that console to turn it on. You have been blasted up by the, the gun demon right there. Your pulse rate has been increased to six. So what that means is that at the beginning of the wits phase, you're going to take six dice now. It roll all six of them. And depending on which results you get, you might just die. I might just die. It's mathematically plausible. Okay. Now divide them the the rolls into one, two, three, four, five, six. One, <gasps> one, three, three, five, six. All right. So you have two actions. You got the five and the six for you, and then we have four for the, the demons. All right. That's not so good. look at those. <laughs> We have two threes, and so the demon in front of you is going to resolve one of the threes and get an evasion token. Evasion. He's evasive. <laughs> it's it's the demon ship. It moves. It's haunted. It's the demon Ghost ship. Boat. You know? Yeah, it's going to be a part of Ghost Boat. Ghost Boat. Like magnets, off center, so that like the walls like slightly just vibrate. They can never they can never stay never still. Never quite right. That first three has been resolved, and like I mentioned before, pulse actions dynamically convert. So you have one more three here, but your two demons can't perform a second evade. So that evade is gonna go down to a two. And now because the guy next to you doesn't need to move, he's going that two is gonna become a one. 
And so now we're left with three ones. And this is where the game might be very cool or not. So you've got to roll those three dice, Witty. And like we've been saying, four or higher is going to be the ticket. Four or higher, preferably a six, because I have two sixes banked. Yes. That looks like That's no four. That's a hours. one, three, and a three. Yeah. All right. So in this case, you get killed. It. Oh. He says. You killed his. You, you killed, killed his lover. my lover. And then he's like, Gah! and then he goes like this, and then he's like, I'm so sorry. I could not save you, but I avenged you. And then he's like, now I own this. <laughs> this is my ship. He's like, this is my ship. But I'm the captain. This is my demon I'm ship. the captain. Hey, you, you gotta scrub the poop deck. Wait, did he fall too? Oh, sorry, bud. Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Yay! I you did it. Died. You died. You demon ship. But you ship. know what? I will. You know when she woke up, my survivor. She went into like, okay, let's get it done mode. She was on it. She got right through the corridor. She was like, let's go. Let's get some power on. I got this. And she just got a little overzealous. The demons, yes, the, the, the demons can turn on you real quick in this game. I think that, because, you know, I don't. In the, the arms In the arms of the demon. Yeah, so there's evade actions are going to be clutch for survivors to not get shredded up because as you can see if you roll bad then uh, yeah it can those, turn very fast it can turn it very can fast turn, yeah. you can be yeah. you can be like oh yeah. i got this and then you turn around the corner and it's like eh. oh. mm -hmm. nice nice thank you Melissa, for taking the time to run me through demon ship again and uh, I've, I was going to say, you know what? I've gotten a little bit better since Adepticon. Uh, I made it I made it farther. I'm going to learn, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my strategy down. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like I was saying in the video, you know, the, it's roguelite. You got you to die to learn. You make mistakes to learn. Um, but thank you so much for making this game, for running me through this game, for and now putting me in this game, which <laughs> is truly the most surreal thing. And every time I think about it, these are my thoughts. I'm like, is that real life? And second, I am beating you in the popularity contest. I'm sorry. You mm -hmm. didn't think you were going to get through this video without me rubbing it in your face. I forgot about that because, I'm yeah, I, because, <laughs> because, you know, again, th whose idea was that? Because I didn't, I, I, I knew that, I, I, again, I was only wanted one mini. So, I mean, like, <laughs> they'll be here putting, put, 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 I put some respect on the name. <laughs> All the comments are going to be, Weedy is a bully confirmed. No problem, though, Woody. I think thank you for <laughs> wanting to be uh, in the game. I think that um, in the same way that try to be vulnerable, putting out games, putting out our creations and stuff, it is very brave of you to want to lend your likeness, uh, your name to to my project. I feel I feel super stoked about that. What well, little goblins in my game? Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I was a little, I was a little nervous about it, but people's reception to it and every, like, he, especially hearing everybody's fun ideas about yeah, what they want to do with the, with the mini, it feels, feels really good. Yeah, I feel, yes. I feel honored so to be a part you, of everyone. it. thank everyone. Thanks, everybody. And don't, and don't forget, forget that you are currently making the world a better place just by being you. It's like your superpower. So keep doing that. Bye, guys.